believer that needs deliverance, the believer that experiences rejection. Rejection. God has put people around you, but they don't just like you. No matter the good you do, you are hated. And I've warned people that have gone through rejection. I said, don't blame your helper. Blame your altar. Don't blame your, 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 your helper. Blame your altar. When there's an altar fight, I've seen people attacking men that God has put in their life, not knowing it is their family battles that are on them. When you handle your altar, your helper will handle you well. When God puts somebody in your life and, be, and because you're, you feel your helper has not helped you, start doing certain things that will make you fortunately not get help at all. I intervened in a situation yesterday and the man was surprised that I called and I was talking to him and he said, this person you are begging for, hold on sir, let me send you the messages he sent me. When I saw messages, the man said, I'm a Christian, even not these messages, he's going to prison street. When I saw messages, I hung up. Insults. Insults from somebody that you, you didn't contribute to his life. You don't want to help me? You don't want to help me? This will happen to you? This will happen to you? That will happen to you? That... The man said, this is prison now. Because this is libelous. This is a libel. And as young, I said, why did you do that? I said, I was angry. I said, no, you're not angry. You are stupid. I said, has police not stopped you before? He said, yes, sir. Why didn't you slap them? So that we know you're angry. I said, this is a spirit that wants to ruin you. Sir, um, um, look at that person that was supported. Look at that one that was supported. This support me. I said, As, so this thing you are doing now, will you now bring it? This is the devil that is, that is working on your mind to keep you in perpetual pain. It's your uncle. You have, been, you, have been, you have been around him for six years. He didn't help you. Now you are not doing what will make him not help you for another six years. Can you see how stupid you are? I said, carry yourself from that, your Urumi you are. Straight to Abuja. Lie down, hold his leg. Hold his leg. Anything he say, tell him I did it. You are stupid, it's true. You are mad, it's true. You are, anything he say, job he say, it's true. Anything he say, it's true. I said, because now they find something. <laughs> Anything he says. Yesterday, in the evening, they called me. And then, um, 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 uh, um, uh, thank you, sir. Um, uh, uh. That's what happened. He said, we are on the dining table, we are eating. I said, you see your life? Look at chicken that you have missed because of your character. I said, you, made, you, you humbled yourself in less than two hours. You are eating with him on the dining. So imagine how many chicken you have missed. You need helpers than they need you. It's like somebody now say he carries his phone and he blocked the governor. He said, this is my phone. I blocked the governor. I'm angry. I don't understand. He's a governor of seven million people. You are just one. It's like a child that says he's not going to talk to his father again. And now this is seven years. He said, I'm not talking to my mother. He locked door. Sit down. He said, I'm not talking to my mom. I'm angry at my mom. So he locked door and he stayed indoors. No problem. When hunger beats you. <laughs> he locked the door. Say, mommy, leave me alone. Say, what happened? I'm not talking to you. The mother said, no problem. So in the, in the morning, there was a, there was a man in, the, in this church. He, the wife would give him food. He says, no eating. The wife give him food. He says, no eating. He was angry. So one day, <laughs> he will lock his door and just go. So one day the wife went to his office, bought some, something, didn't meet him at home. I told her, ah, no matter what the door is, keep making peace. So the wife quickly rushed home and saw the husband in the kitchen. <laughs> Opening the wife's soup. <laughs> and was dishing. The wife stood behind him. When he did, thought, he's shocked. The wife said, I thought you were angry. Why are you eating my food? <laughs> no wonder. He said, anytime I go, this food will reduce. So you said, <laughs> When he told me, I started laughing. So I said, no, are you eating the food? He said, it's not my, it's not my money. I said, I said, listen, let me something. In English, there is what is called verbal communication and non-verbal communication. Eh? <laughs> verbal is what we are discussing. Well, we are not discussing, but we are communicating. 
It's still communication. The woman cooked the food. The man refused to greet. The, man now, the woman now leave. The man now sneak and eat the food. That's non-verbal. Why not make it verbal? <laughs> So when you are going through that, you must understand that it's a demonic case. It's a situation. I was angry with a man of God, a known man of God in this country. He did something. I was very angry. And I wasn't talking to him for almost three years. I was so angry because what he did, he did it wrong against me. And I just said somebody saying something. Somebody doing something, employing things against me, spending money against me. And I was so upset. He's an elderly man of God in the 70s. And I was angry one year, two years, three, and the Lord sat in there and said, Are you a Christian? I said, Yes. He said, This is your anger. What can you do to this man that is number one is older than you? He has been in ministry before you. What can your anger now do? It doesn't do anything. The sorrow of man does not work the righteousness of God. That's what the Bible says. I carried my legs home at the airport. I went flat. When his security saw me, they cocked their gun because they thought I wanted to fight. I went flat and I held his leg. I said, pray for me. Forgive me. He offended me. I said, but forgive me. I said, because the principle of the covenant, the less is blessed of the better. better. Hebrews 7, 7. The less is blessed of the greater. I said, pray for me. And he started crying. He said, you have taught me what it means to obey the Holy Spirit. He prayed for me. He blessed me. When I landed, he called me. Have you landed? Friendship was reestablished. I don't really need him, but I need God. This conscious level, are you feeding me? Are you feeding me? A Christian won't say that. Even if you're not feeding me, you are a brother to me. You hear some people talk, oh, for what? Oh, no. You just make reaction. I'm trying to let you know that all of those attitudes are spirit sponsored. They know you are close to what will change your story. They know you are close to breaking altars in your family. So what are they doing? They are making you fight your source. The worst thing that can happen to a man is for Satan to stand at his right hand. Joshua the high priest, Satan stood at his right hand. No matter the prayer, when Satan is standing at your right hand, Satan has a legal ground, a legal evidence why you must not rise. Fast, pray, until Satan is removed from your right hand or until there is an angelic intervention. Angel Michael had to come. How many times did you see Angel Michael in the Bible? But for Joshua the high priest, not you, a low priest, though. Joshua, high priest in Zechariah chapter 3, verse 1. Satan stood at his right hand because of his filthy garment. When you experience that rejection, no matter what you do, you are not appreciated. That's rejection. Any little mistake you make is amplified. The good you do is simplified. Are you following what I'm talking about? You do one small error. It's exaggerated. You do good thing. It's explained as nothing. That's rejection. Who is that believer that needs deliverance? The believer that has that goes through chronic poverty. Chronic poverty. Successive poverty. Poverty. Poverty is absence of abundance. The thing about poverty is not the absence of, of means or the lack of poverty. It's the public ridicule that poverty brings. Why I hate poverty? It's not because of the lack of money. Because even rich men can go broke. That is why they borrow money from the bank. The pain of poverty is the ridicule. Landlord, knock on your door. It was private that you had no money. That was poverty. But that, that back out of my house is the ridicule of poverty that makes poverty distasteful. Is the ridicule of poverty. You have no money. Your wife is not aware. Or maybe she's aware. Children are not aware. When the nurse said, Daddy, school fees. You say, I don't have. That is the ridicule of poverty. Am I talking to somebody here? That's the ridicule of poverty. You must attack poverty today. Stop saying, I mean, I like myself because the family will come from. We, 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 are, we are very, it's a, it's a humble, poor background. I don't understand. Humble, poor background. If you are poor, do you have a choice? You must be humble now. So poverty and humility don't go together. Humility is called humility when you have capacity to be proud but refuse to be proud. 
So you can't say you are humble when there's nothing. What, what will you be proud for? You are broke. You have no money. You say you are humble. How? What else will you do? Do you have a choice? You mean this called humility when you have a choice to be proud and you refuse to be proud? You say you are humble. It's like somebody who cannot afford alcohol. He say, I've stopped, I've stopped drinking. So I say, no, I know they drink again. You get money, I don't get. We can only believe that what they call New Year resolution. When there is money in your hand and you say, no, you're not drinking. Am I talking here? When people use their own hand to, to destroy themselves. These are believers. I told you about a young boy who went to school and he came back. The mother had not prepared this meal for him to eat up. The boy was angry. Waited for two hours. The mom was still in the kitchen. He slept. He woke up. The mom was still cooking. When the mom was done, the mom brought his food. Three slices of plantain, which they call dodo, fried plantain. Little portion of beans, very small. The boy went to the mother in the kitchen. Mom, is this my food? The mother said, yes. This is my food? He said, yes. He went to the dustbin. And he poured the, the food away. While he was going back, he was lick, licking the plate. <laughs> was licking the plate. <laughs> he poured away the food. While he was going back, he was licking the plate. You see, how, you see how people can be stupid? When the spirit is at work on their life. The worst group of people to counsel and advise are Christians who are under demonic manipulation. You can't talk to them. Or no, you can't talk to them. Demonic manipulation make you live in error and think you are right. It gives you reasons. It will give you reasons, justifiable reasons to remain in error. That's why it's called manipulation. It's called manipulation. Justifiable reasons. I'm not talking of, you see real reasons. I listed 10 reasons why I, not, I should not talk to that man. And none of them are justifiable. I you want my life and I'll talk to you. And the Lord said to me, they want your life. Could they take it? I said, no. He said, come and go and open the principles of God. Justifiable. Who is that person that needs deliverance? I've not even started my message. Let me stop here. I'll give you two more. That person that has suicidal tendencies. Little thing, you want to die. A Christian. Born again. Have you not seen believers in church who commit suicide? We have stories of people in different departments. They say they took their life. They took their life. They took their life. They took their life because they are depressed. Because they are depressed. Satan makes you feel that this world, there's no need to live. Why not just die and end it all? Yes, you are a believer. You speak in tongues. But you have these suicidal tendencies. How many times have you carried a sniper attempting to drink it? You know. How many times have you felt like just entering the road? How many times? Society spirit. A young child was sent by the mother to go buy something. All of a sudden she stood at the middle of the road and started crying. About 10, 11 years of age. Started crying. The stepmother, actually not the mother. Started crying. And people were honing. Leave the road. The girl was just there crying. Crying. A man was good enough. I'm sure he must be a father. Park the camp. Move the child from the road. Why are you crying? Leave the road. By the way, why are you crying? He said, I'm thinking. What are you thinking? My stepmother, I'm just thinking that she sent me now to go and buy something. I'm thinking that if a vehicle hits me and I die, will she cry? <laughs> She's not dead, though. Vehicle has not hit her. She's thinking that what if a vehicle hit her now and she died? This wicked woman, will she cry? So because of that thought, she is now crying. Yeyetic thinking. Very momushous and yeyeshous thinking. What is working in her mind is a spirit and she needs you may speak in tongues but if all i'm talking to somebody now i'm hitting some nails am i talking to somebody here how do many believers get entangled number one ungodly gift materials ungodly gifts be careful of the gifts you collect gifts somebody can give you a necklace 
that has been demonized. And you cannot, you cannot do anything about, that's why I call ungodly. You, every gift you are given, pray on them. Every gift you are given, pray. There are many women, I can tell you stories of people I had to pray for, who are believing God for the fruits of the womb, and they never got a child. Why? On their wedding day, a wrong gift was given to them. I was praying for a lady in Benin. All of a sudden, I was getting orange, 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 orange. I said, woman, the Lord is telling me that there is, what is orange? She said, orange, I like orange. I said, no, that's not what I'm saying. What do you have to do with orange? He said, I don't know. I said, your wedding gift, there is orange. He says, I married nine years ago, over nine years ago. And the husband was wealthy. So all their gifts, they put them in a room and they locked the door. So they have never opened them. And I said, the Lord said, I should tell you and your husband to go back home, open all your gifts. She said, ah, so we can't do it alone. No, what about the house help? And I said, I said, just two of you. When they opened the room, cobwebs. They began to clean. And they sat down, opening one by one. The wife was getting tired. He said, there's no orange here. Plastic. Um, this packer. They're using packing debts. Plates. The man was tired until the man screamed. I've seen it. They opened it. Ladies and gentlemen, nine years, orange was still fresh. When they cut it open, there was no seed inside. They came to me and they told me. I said, you know what that means? That so long that that orange is in your house, as there's no seed in the orange, there will be no child in your house. They speak in tongues. The man himself is a Sunday school leader. But wrong gifts. Wrong gifts. Wrong gifts. One of the things God is careful, the almighty God that created you. Second Chronicles 19, 7. He said, God cannot lie. God is not involved in iniquity and God does not collect gifts. <laughs> does not accept bribe. Am I talking to somebody here? Am I talking to somebody right now? Naaman was going to the king of the to going to the king of Israel. And he went. Naaman took gifts. He carried gifts in his hand. Nehemiah went to his God, called the God, called, called Raymond. And he put his gift on the altar of Raymond. What was the altar of Raymond? When you drop your gift on the altar of Raymond, the altar of Raymond is the altar of substitute. Okay? Whatever you had as a problem, as you drop that gift, whoever collects that, what you had as a problem enters into that gift. And whoever collects that gift becomes a victim of the problem that you have. So when Elijah said, I'm not taking the gift of Naaman, Elijah was not saying he had too much. He knew the spirit behind it. That collecting the gift of Naaman is collecting the leprosy of Naaman. So as soon as Gehazi collected the gift of Naaman, Elijah said, what have you done? The leprosy of this man clave on you. I rejected the gift not because I'm stupid, it was because I know that this gift, sir, anything given to you, pray on it. Be careful. Be careful how you live your life. Damage control is expensive. Be careful how you live your life. Damage control is expensive. Be careful. Exodus 23 verse 8. A gift blinded the eyes. Deuteronomy 16 19. A gift blinded the eyes. <laughs> Proverbs 15, 27 says, He that hated gift shall live. I wish I was talking to somebody here. You must lay hands on any gift you are given. Pray on it. Hand it over to God. On your birthday, don't just jump and be collecting things. As they give it or you drop it somewhere. When they are gone, lay your hands. Bless it. Pronounce words on them. Not with a heart of suspicion, but with a heart of surrender. Whatever the person intends will happen to him. Be careful. Those of you that have long throats for gifts, long throats. My pet is two days. What are you doing? Let me bow you. Am I your father? Did I bring you this word? Am I talking to somebody here? Even Jesus Christ, the Son of God, on his birthday, what we tell him is Merry Christmas. Jesus, the Son of God, what we tell him on his birthday is Merry Christmas. All your birthday is to, to give people bill. Once your birthday is coming, all your friends are, are, are afraid. 
I wish they can push it forward because you are a problematic person. Why are you not talking to your friend now? They didn't give you anything on your birthday. As what? As your biological parents? My birthday is coming home. I'm sending you 10 things. Pick the one you will do. As what? As the president you voted for into power. My birthday is coming. I want a new phone. I'm not against gifts, but I'm telling you, be sensitive. Don't be that person who is easily swayed, especially ladies. You say you love me, you have not given me anything. You say you love me, you have not bought me anything. I believe women should be cared for. Women should be maintained. That's how they are wired. I'm not against it. That's how they are created. God did not create man. God, God, God created man rather, but God formed woman. God created man, Pam. But God formed woman. That's why woman is more appealing than man because God formed them. For men, God created them. Man, God, ha, he appeared. Woman, God creates. God formed, rather. <laughs> Am I communicating? Number two. I'm taking your time because we are going to minute. Let me see how, what. I, 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 am I free to go on? Number two, where people get entangled. I'm talking of believers. Now, the first one I mentioned is that ungodly gifts. I'm talking of believers whose life change because of a wrong gift they received. They speak in tongues, they pray. Whose life became corrupted. Now they're in battle, they're in captivity because there's a wrong gift in their house. It can even be an animal. It can be food. It can be anything. But they are bound because of a wrong gift. Do anything they are giving someone to give to you, collect it. I'm not saying reject gift. Take them. Say thank you, Jesus. Lord, I hand this over to you. In Jesus' name. When his hand come upon it, he will look for the influences in the realm of the spirit. But the ones the Holy Ghost tells you don't take, please don't take. Don't take. Somebody gave you just snacks, snacks. And because of snacks, your womb is closed. Can you imagine? Can you imagine how serious you are that you became barren because of meat pie? No, what will you take? <laughs> you became barren, not fallopian tube, not low sperm count. What's the problem? Puff, puff. From the day you ate puff, puff, you became poor. Just to see your problem. Puff, puff. Of. 100 naira. That's, that's the source of your problem. How much? 20 naira. Huh? Yes, you're right. That's what some say. That it doesn't matter. And don't forget that in it doesn't matter, there are a dozen matters. In it doesn't matter, there are a dozen matters. Be careful. The gifts you collect. Number two way, believers get entangled. Somebody shout deliverance. Shout deliverance. Shout, I must be delivered. Second way, believers get entangled is ungodly music. Ungodly music. There is no music that is neutral. There was a time in a part of America as people, they notice a, 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 a group of youths with a certain age. They were dying, 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 dying. They decided to do a survey and they discover a particular music they were all listening to. The music tells them that there's nothing in this world. What are they living for? There's nothing in this world. And these are children. They started drinking all kinds of things and taking their lives. They had to ban that music. Every music has an image. As you sing a song, an image is created. That's why if you read Daniel chapter, chapter 3, the Bible says, Mordecai has said, as you hear the sound of this music, bow down to this image. Any music you hear, its image holds you in captivity. Verse 5, as you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sack, dulcimer, and all kinds 
of music. The sad, the ducima, the connect are instruments of music. He says, as you hear them, worship the golden image that they are set up. In other words, Mordecai and uh, 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 Nebuchadnezzar knew he could do nothing except he initiates music. The devil, all he was in heaven was a musician. So when God took him out of heaven, Satan did not take music. God. Satan, music is wired into him. Every part of the devil as, as uh, a cherub was music. When he moved his hand, it's music. His leg is music. Everything is music. He was casted to hell as an unrighteous cherub. He's still a cherub. So music is still in him. So he's interested in music. I'm very well versed. I'm very well researched. So if I'm talking to you, I'm talking as an authority of somebody who has sat down. I research. I don't just come out to talk nonsense. This life, this whole world, there are 6,500 languages. In Africa, there are 2,000 languages. In Nigeria, there are 500 languages. And somebody will sing a song that is not in any of the languages. It's not in the 6,500 language of the world. Not in the 2,000 language of Africa. Not in the 500 language of Nigeria. And you are following the song. Do rime, amen, no. You are following the song. 